Hey there, I'm John Flores, editor in chief of On the Level Magazine and chief of content with the BMW Riders Association. I'm here with Val, Wendy, and Lisa from the Women's Coalition of Motorcyclists. Wendy is an Iron Butt rally winner back in 2019. Is that right, Wendy? You got it. And uh, Val is currently boondocking somewhere in Nevada, and Lisa is in North Carolina. So we're here this evening to talk about the Women's Coalition of Motorcyclists. Lisa, do you want to tell us the origin story of the WCM? Sure. Uh, the WCM was founded in the early 20-teens uh, by a, a group of women from cross-section across the industry who were attempting to figure out a way to meet a goal of doubling the women motorcyclists they, by 2020. They, they started this thinking in 2010 and it took them a while to get it started. But by 2020, they wanted to double the number of women in motorcycling. And at the time that was moving from like 4% to 8% to now what seems to be 19% of the motorcycle uh, riding population. But uh, the goal was to try, to try and start with women who represented all facets and all demographics of the um, riding population and see what we had in common and see what we didn't have in common to move it forward to try and entice and, and encourage more women to become riders. Great. I mean, I would imagine that uh, women have long been a small minority in the sport that we love. And I would imagine that you all have stories about how that plays out. Like, Wendy, we were talking about it earlier. Tell us a couple of things. So I um, own a motorcycle shop. Uh, I've owned a, 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 my own shop for 14 years. I'm a factory certified mechanic. So I have a lot of experience on both sides of the counter, um, you know, of the industry and how it is to interact um, in this sport that I love both as a rider, as a mechanic, as a customer. Um, and I felt like being a very strong minority in all of those fields, um, it was really important to start putting some of um, this information together, um, kind of coalescing all of our experiences into um, a little bit more solid uh, information that we could bring to the industry. And, and um, I was excited uh, when this opportunity came up to, um, it seemed like a really great way um, to start gathering um, those numbers in a um, more of a solid fashion. Oh yeah, for sure. I know Val. You 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 said you were a GS rider, and yeah, you've you've probably again uh, a minority in in the sport of in the sport of GS riders, and you probably have stories as well. What got <laughs> you? What experiences uh, led you to the WCM? Well, I mean, you know, basically, any woman rider is going to have something they can relate that just was is challenging about being a minority in the sport. Um, and I certainly have my fair share. Um, it's, I also moved from the Southeast to the West and there's just a culture shift there as well. So it's interesting to have seen that change and how I'm accepted. Um, but all of that experience and with the, um, our other two members of this board who aren't here with us today, um, you know, we've brought this all together so it can create these questions for these in this data collection project and use that as the path to elevate women in the industry. Yeah, you were talking earlier about how each of you have stories, but like stories isn't data. Right. right? And I think and, that's, yeah, I'm so go ahead. You know, and then that's kind of how I've been putting it as I've been putting, um, you know, doing my part of promoting this is we all have our anecdotes. And as you mentioned earlier, anecdotes aren't data. So with hard data that we can take to the industry about women's wants, needs, obstacles, frustrations, well, then we can do something. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's talk about this data collection project, what the outline of it, what what you're hoping to try to achieve and where you are now. So um, when this this uh, this the genesis of this came about, uh, we we thought there were basically four big pillars of inf of areas of the interaction in motorcycling that were important to know about how women what women's reactions were. One area was training. How do women, um, are women happy with the training environment and what things could change in terms of training to make it more uh, feasible for women to get involved in sport? The second is gear. 
you know, we all, all of us, all five of us and every woman I know has stories about how gear works and doesn't work for them. So we wanted to collect that data and really get it, get it in a form that we could share. The third is uh, motorcycle design itself. There are some issues about motorcycle design that don't work very well for women. And if we want to grow this sport, we have to really look at that and try and understand what would make it better. The fourth is uh, dealership interactions. And Wendy spoke to that a little bit. I, I have some background in that side as well. I've been a general manager at, a, at one motorcycle dealership and finance manager at another and a parts manager at yet another. So you know, I know also from both sides of the counter that women and men are treated differently in, in the dealership equation. So how can we improve that to make it more uh, enticing for women to come in, buy motorcycles, buy gear, buy parts, all of interact with the service department and have a good experience. So those are the four areas that we're looking at. Um, we're in the first area right now in the training one, and uh, we can talk specifics about that if you'd like to. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you were saying earlier that no one has collected this type of data uh, up to now. Uh, the data that you have seen hasn't been split uh, across gender. And there's just this assumption that this is just the data. So this, I was saying it earlier, this kind of reminds me of the Hurt Report, like that first real study on motorcycle accidents that ended up being uh, groundbreaking and groundbreaking and people cited uh, for years and decades, for decades afterwards. So Lisa, you're saying you're the first uh, part of this survey is about training, right? Right, right. We've we've created a survey that's about 20, uh, 22 questions or so dealing with um, training concepts and really asking women um, what what things are working. Do they know what kind of training they want? Um, what, do they want women only classes? Do they want women trainers? All those kinds of questions to really get a handle on what things are working and what things aren't. And so uh, as, as we were talking earlier, we have over 800 uh, responses already um, and we're looking for more to, to essentially scatter across the demographics of the female riding um, population. And once we have that, we'll be uh, in good shape to share that information and feel confident we've got a representative sample. That's great. Well, um, if folks want to take the survey, women in particular, uh, you can visit their website, which is wcm2020.org. And I'm looking at the website now. It's in the lower left. It's called the Women's Coalition of Motorcyclists Data Collection Project. So that's where they can click on it. And if they want to follow you on Facebook, you, are on, you guys are on Facebook at WCM2020. So follow them there and I wish you all the best of luck in your survey. I hope when you get some data, we'd love to revisit and talk about some of the findings and hopefully we can start uh, really turning these anecdotes into, into real actionable data. So thank yes. you again, Wendy, Val and Lisa for joining. Thank you. Thank, thank you, John. John.